Welcome back to my channel. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for checking this video out today. Super excited about the video I have for you. I'm making an x-ray cabinet for a friend of mine who's in my area who is a chiropractor. Now, you might not have any need for an x-ray cabinet, but hopefully you can get some tips and tricks from this video. Check it out. A friend of mine commissioned me to make a x-ray cabinet for them. They were using a a metal rack that just had tons and tons of these x-rays on them that were just falling over. They needed a better place to hold them and they actually wanted it out in their lobby so that people could see it. And so they commissioned me to put together this project. What I'm starting out with is just plywood cut, rough cut at my local home center. I don't have a big enough vehicle to take home a full sheet of four by eight plywood. So I usually have them cut it down roughly to the estimate and then I cut it down to the exact measurement myself. And before you say anything, I know my yard is a disaster. The first thing that I do is just cut the things down to size using my circular saw. I find for my size shop going outside doing it on the ground, for one, keeps the dust down and is just better suited for my purposes. You'll notice there I'm making two measurements, one for the actual cut and one for the piece of cut off piece of plywood that I use as a straight edge to cut this down to size. One day I'll actually make a jig for this, but right now it works perfectly. Here I am marking out, I'm doing a special thing called stop dados and it is just what they say they are. They're dados that stop, they don't go all the way to the edge. You'll see why as we get into the project. Now, stupid me thought it would be a good idea to do this on the ground. I very quickly wise up to the fact that I need to do it on saw horses. You see that? That is a stop dado. What that means is I plunge routed a hole into the edge right where I wanted it to stop and then I'll connect it. They all turned out really well and what that does is that leaves a rounded edge. I need, these are going to be for the shelves, so I need to square them up which is what I'm doing right here. A friend of mine came by, super helpful, his name is Andy, thank you to Andy for coming out and we had a great time and here I'm cutting these panels in half. What that will do is give me the two sides with the stop dados on each side, on the outer edges. Making sure everything works. It's beautiful. The next day, the temperature dropped about 20 degrees, but here I'm working on the shelves. Same process. I get the pieces cut roughly at the home center, then I go through, cut them down to exact size. And what I'm doing here is actually getting them to a spot where I can take them inside because it looked like it was going to rain. So I can take them inside and do this on my table saw. Here they are. I'm just getting them down to the final width on the table saw. This is my least favorite thing to do on a table saw is cutting dados because I don't have an insert plate. And this should prove to me why I need one. But right now you're gonna see a set of, of video clips that just show this thing out in the middle, basically of a four inch gap that things could just go flying. Luckily they did not. I tried to make this thing safe as possible, but hopefully in the future, I will put together some kind of insert or some kind of jig to make this a little safer. So what I did was just measure where I needed. These are for the actual dividers that are going into the shelves, which you will see uh, later how they get put in. So here I am cutting the dividers for each of the shelves. Super simple, and that's where you'll see the dados come into play. So I'm cutting each of those pieces.
And in the process of sanding and painting, everyone's favorite thing to do. My buddy Andy came back and helped me put everything together. And we got it to a standing position, everything locked and glued and screwed together. That was the basic frame. And there it is with the dividers, all glued in. The next part of this project was to do the back panel, which was a very simple cutting down of a quarter inch piece of plywood and using my stapler to attach it to the back and then working on some trim. I just used some one by pieces of pine and that is how I created the uh, little strips for the dividers. It was a pretty easy case of just lining them up and attaching them. Filled all the holes with some wood putty and painted everything again. I think sometimes I feel like I paint more than I do anything else. A last minute addition to this project were some doors. And so I decided to do something a little different with the doors. I used a piece of Luan and some pine to create a frame. And here I am just cutting them down and getting them ready to cut down to the right dimensions. I used a Craig Jake for this just because I wanted to keep it simple and I didn't want to see the fasteners or any nail holes. Um, more things to fill. And once that was ready, I flipped everything over, attached the Luan to it, and used my stapler to attach the back to give it a nice rigid form. And I instituted a little bit of child labor and got my daughter out there. I wanted to give this thing a special design for the door panel. So I had some eight foot pallet pieces from a pallet that actually held a hot tub. And I cut them down to size, sanded them up, and then glued them to the center of these panels. Actually, it was a really easy process and I love the way it came out. I think it came out um, really, really well. Use some weights to weigh everything down. Didn't nail it, didn't do anything like that because I didn't want to see fasteners. Decided to do this door a little differently and actually just glue it right to the, um, right to the Luan. For the door hinges, I went with piano hinges because I wanted them to swing all the way open so they could get as many x-rays as possible. Added a lock. Some handles. and then a piece so that one of the doors could actually stay attached uh, so the lock would work. There I am just measuring where it needs to go so I can drill a hole in the bottom for the metal clip to drop down into. I used these antique label holders so that they could mark every cubby. Then it was the fun task of getting it out of my shop into the back of a pickup truck and delivered. Had no problems getting it there and installed. Here it is installed in the office. I love the clean white lines and then the pallet wood accent. The client was super happy. They really like it. Thank you so much for watching. I am super excited and super happy how this came out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. I would love to connect with you. I also have other videos you can check out. Subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm trying to be more regular in posting these. Thank you so much for watching again. I'll talk to you later.